Today, we're going to be talking about how doing hard things is actually good for you. You know, all those things that you keep avoiding, that you walk away from, and maybe you don't even think of it as being hard or that you're getting frustrated because maybe you're not. You know, maybe your body just kind of like you've learned a behavior to walk away from something before you even determine if it's hard. Well, anyways, today's show is all about how doing hard things is actually good for you. It's good for your brain and it's good for who you're becoming. Let's get on to the show. You're listening to Be In Demand, the podcast for honest advice, inspiring stories, and ideas for growing your business by leveraging the expert that you are. I'm your host, Lorian Mirabito, business mentor, and I'm also a reformed, painfully shy girl red wine lover, and exercise enthusiast. Join me as I share how being positioned as the expert in your industry, even if it's a busy one, will help you stand out and be the one in demand to hire and work with. So yes, you heard me right. Doing hard things is good for you. You know, a lot of times what I've noticed is like, oh yeah, yeah, it can be all talk. Like, yeah, doing hard things. I love to do hard things in certain areas of my life. And maybe even you feel that same way. There are certain places in your life where you're like, I can do hard things. But maybe when it comes to your business, that's where it gets a little tricky. And maybe you don't like hard things. And part of that reason why I think we don't like hard things when it comes to our business is because we are comparing ourselves and seeing so much online, and I'm going to call BS on a lot of stuff that's out there on social media, and how people are saying, hey, it only took me like three days to start earning six figures. You know, we're comparing ourselves to that. And that can be, and I'm not saying that's entirely the reason why we are avoiding hard things in our business, but I think it's adding to it. So I'm going to tell you a couple of stories during this episode And also, I want you to be thinking about the different areas of your life where you do hard things. You know, maybe it's in your home life. Maybe it's taking care of a sick loved one, whether that's your parents, a child, a family member. You know, maybe you've been in some, the past few years have been very unique and very difficult for a lot of people. Maybe you did hard things there. You know, you were able to get through lockdown. You were able to get through the homeschooling. You were able to get through the, oh my God, just wearing yoga pants for the past two years. (laughs) Um, I know like myself, I've been like trying to broaden my horizons on on my wardrobe actually. And not just wearing regular clothes, but adding color back into my wardrobe. Where else have you been doing hard things that you have evidence that you can do hard things? So that's something that I want you to be thinking about. But what I want you to really know also, as we start this episode, is that if life were easy, with absolutely no challenges, and there was absolutely no uncertainty in your life, you'd be bored. You'd be absolutely bored, Steph, because part of human needs is certainty and uncertainty. We want challenges and we also want things to be easy. We want to be loved. You know, There are six different human needs and I'm not going to go into all of them, but certainty and uncertainty are part of them. So if life were easy and you had no challenges and you were certain about everything, you would just be bored. Having challenges adds variety to our lives. So let's talk about the challenges, you know, and the learning, the learning to do hard things and how it is so good for us. It's so good for our brain. It is so good for who we are becoming. I mean, when I think about some of the hard things that I've had to overcome, that I've had to, the hard things I've had to learn, you know, the satisfaction that comes from being on the other side, the satisfaction about being able to look back and say, I did that. I'm proud of myself. And it is so nice, like even at the end of the day to start thinking about, and this is something that I do as I lay my head down on my pillow, is I think about like, what am I proud of today? 
And I like to list off those things. Why? Because it's really good for me to acknowledge little wins. Not only those big, giant wins, the little ones. So whatever is hard for me could actually be really easy for you because your talents and skills. Maybe it's something that you already already tackled. You've got it down. But there may be things that I'm doing that I'm like, oh, this is super easy. And for you, that's the hard stuff. I mean, let's face it. You know, if you're a coach or you're a consultant, the stuff that comes easy to you is the reason why your clients come to you. My clients don't come to me because they're fabulous at public speaking and they know exactly how to write a compelling, captivating, and converting presentation. No, they come to me because they don't know how to do that stuff. And that's the stuff that comes super easy for me. But once upon a time, that stuff wasn't easy for me. It took me years to get good at what I'm doing, not to mention my craft of coaching you know, learning to coach people at the particular level that I'm at now. I mean, I've been coaching for over 20 years. So I'm a master coach. And that's something that my clients get from me also. So I want to share with you a story about my own pattern. And that's what it is. I'm going to call it a pattern. When it came to hard things, when it came to hard things, I would walk away. If I couldn't figure it out in 30 seconds or maybe a couple of minutes at the max, I would walk away. I would go find something else to do. As a matter of fact, and you've probably heard me tell this story before also, the very first episode that I recorded on this podcast, this Be In Demand podcast, I got so frustrated. I mean, I walked, I walked away from the microphone And I took a deep breath and, you know, at least I was able to realize right then and there, like, Lorianne, your muscle for recording podcasts is weak. You've never done this before. You've been a guest on people's shows, but you haven't recorded your own show where you're speaking to yourself. You know, in which case, I would say like my very first episodes, I felt like I was talking to myself. Whereas now, you probably, I mean, if you go back and listen to my very first episode, you can probably tell the difference between then and now. There's a little more personality here because I'm not just talking to myself. I am talking to you, the one person who's listening to this. And it's not to say that only one person is listening to this, but I look at it as talking to one person and not the whole big audience. So I am talking to you. So that's how this podcast has changed. But there was a time where I would walk away from things that were hard. That was a pattern that I had. And all it takes is like that very first time that you walk away from something and that starts to form a habit or the pattern. Because then the next time something hard, I walked away. So that's how it becomes, like you do this over and over again, it becomes a pattern, it becomes a habit. I have trained my nervous system that when something is hard, I walk away. And I would find something else to do. Like suddenly, doing laundry became very important. I should just go do laundry. While I'm doing laundry, I will think about this. And guess what happened? I kept putting it off. Procrastination. And all it is is fear. You know, when I really peel back the layer of what was going on, when we peel back that pattern, there was, I didn't trust myself, and I didn't want to look like a fool. And when you think about it, like the very first time that I recorded this podcast, nobody saw me. So nobody was going to say, oh, yeah, Lorianne, there, there you were, looking foolish, recording your podcast, talking all by yourself. No, that didn't happen at all. But I look at some of the other things that were hard, but I didn't want to look foolish. I didn't want to be judged. I didn't trust myself that I was doing it right. Felt that I had to get it perfect the very first time. And today on social media, I actually shared, you know, repetition is the path to mastery. This is close to 200 episodes that I have now recorded. I can't tell you how many times I have spoken on stages. 
can't tell you how many like live streams and videos and everything else that I've created. But I can tell you that my very first one is not nearly as good as the very last one that I did. Repetition. I'm constantly getting better. And one of the things that I can share with you now after recognizing and noticing this pattern is that you can't unknow what you know. So it's like you see this pattern. It's like, okay. So anytime I saw myself get up and start to like um, go do laundry because something was hard, I'd be like, oh, there's that pattern again. Let me go sit down. I'm actually going to set an alarm 10 minutes. I'm going to give myself 10 minutes to try and figure this out. I mean, I recently bought a new MacBook Pro and it's got some software on it that I don't know how to use. I just want to go back to my older MacBook and use this video software that's over there. But I just haven't learned how to use the new software that's on the new Mac. So is it hard? Yes. And I just realized that just has to go on a project list. I'll figure it out. I'm a smart woman. I can figure this out. I just need to put time in my schedule, not just a 15-minute opening that I have, but maybe two hours so that I can go and watch some videos over on YouTube and actually practice at the same time. Recently, I was visiting my sister, and she homeschools her children, and her middle child was doing some advanced, um, I think, geometry. And she was getting very frustrated, and I could just see it in her eyes and how she was saying, I don't know the answer, and my sister was not letting her go on this. She had to do the work. And I was sitting right next to her doing some of my work. And I leaned over to her and I told her, what you are learning right now, not the math, but what you are learning about yourself, you are going to use for the rest of your life. Do you want to know what that is? And she was, gave me that pouty look and she's like, what? What's the answer? My answer was, you can do hard things. This is only hard right now because you don't know how to do it. There's a lot of things, like she is a phenomenal dog trainer. Said so you didn't know, always know how to train dogs, and now you do. It comes easy to you. So you have evidence that you can do hard things. That's what you're learning with this particular math problem, that you can do hard things. And learning that is going to serve you very well into your life. Here's another way, another um, example of hard things. It's kind of like climbing a big wall. If you've ever done a Spartan race, I've never done a Spartan race, but it's, you know, one of these races with all these different obstacles and challenges. The wall is the hard thing. That's the hurdle. And you got to get over that wall in order to walk on the nice, flat, beautiful gardens. Like whatever it is that you want on the other side. Maybe it's a beach. But you have to climb over this wall. And there's a reward on the other side. And that wall, that wall is there to see how badly do you want that. How badly do you want that goal? You want to sell out your, your client roster? You want to have a wait list? You got to put more offers out there. You got to invite people on sales calls. If you're not good at sales calls, that's why you should be doing sales calls because that's the only way that you get better at them. You want to write converting content, amazing copy? You've got to write. You want to run a marathon? The only way to run a marathon is to actually run. You can't just, you know, sit at the gym and ride the bike. You actually have to Do the activity. Be on your feet. It's hard. But life is not supposed to be easy. But what if you instead looked at it as, hey, I'm just learning something new. Instead of saying, this is hard. I don't know how to do this. Oh, I'm just learning something new. I love to learn something new. I'm having fun while I learn something new. What if you did that? That's a completely different attitude, a different energy that shows up to the challenge. Because when that wall is there, when you come across that wall, you got one of three choices. 
You can either walk by it, which means that you're not going over that wall. You can sit there, cross your arms, and stare at that wall for a very, very long time. Or you can decide to go over that wall. You can decide that I'm going to figure out how to get over that wall. Not sure how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to have a boatload of fun figuring out how to get on the other side of this wall. And then what you're doing is you are teaching your nervous system that you can do hard things, that you can do new things, that you can keep learning new things. It's only hard right now because you're not good at it. That's all. It's kind of like learning like the new software, like the video software I was telling you about. It's so easy on my older Mac because I've had it for a very long time. I literally like the, the software that I had. I've had for a very long time. Sure, I could just buy the new version, but I'm sure I'd have to learn something new. But my new Mac, my new MacBook, came with, like I purchased, this video software. So I have to learn this new software. It's kind of like when I went from being a PC user to a Mac user. I did not know how to use the Mac. And granted, it's very intuitive. But you know what? I didn't know how to use pages, the word processing. I did not know how to use it. And what did I do? I wrote a book. Yes, you heard that right. I wrote a book, a goal-setting book, that helped me learn how to use pages. All the different features, like bullets and making boxes and all different types of fonts. And it, it's a book that you can actually find it on Amazon. It's still for sale. It's uh, the Blueprint Success System. And it's a year-long goal-setting program where it helps you decide um, what goals you want and which quarter they should go in or are they year-long goals, etc. <laughs> but I worked very hard on that book. I was in the Apple Store whenever I got stumped. But guess what? I learned how to use my Mac. I learned all fun tricks because I put the time into learning because I can do hard things. So how about speaking? There was a time where I hadn't spoken before, and maybe you're listening to this podcast because you want to get into speaking, but you've never spoken before, so of course it seems hard. But what if you thought it was fun while you were learning? Maybe you call yourself a shy person. Who, if you're a shy person, shy people definitely do not speak in front of people. Oh, especially not in front of audiences. Really? I'm a reformed, painfully shy girl. Maybe you don't even know what to say. You've got all these ideas on, like, to put into a presentation and share with an audience. And you fall into that over-teaching mode. Or maybe you're unsure of, like, how to get booked. Those are all your stone walls. And you can either walk away, you can stare at it, or you can decide to climb over that wall. And think about it. When you get to the other side of that wall, think about the satisfaction that you have knowing that you did hard things. As a matter of fact, um, whenever one of my clients who has never spoken before, when they give their first speech, they are so well prepared, first off. I've given them tips that make them look like a pro right from the get-go. So you can't even tell that it's the first time that they've spoken in front of an audience. But they are so freaking proud of themselves afterwards. I am so freaking proud of them that they did it. They knew it was hard. They had fun putting their presentation together. And a lot of times they actually say it's actually hard, <laughs> but they've got, and it's only hard because they've never done it before. But that's why they have me because I guide them through the process. I try to make it fun, and I try to make it nice and easy, and I show them my process so that they can do it again and again and again. But they got to the other side of the wall. That's the important thing. So what they do is they are teaching their nervous system, I can speak. I can speak in front of audiences. What a beautiful skill to learn. So I want you to look at some of the hard things that are in your life. Do you have a pattern when something is hard? Maybe it's in your business. Maybe it's a con having conversations. Maybe it's in your personal life. Is there 
some area of your life where you're just like, here's a hard thing that I need to accomplish. Here's my wall. I need to get to the other side. I'm tired of standing on this side of the wall just staring at it. I'm going to teach my nervous system new skills. I'm going to have a new pattern. That's what I want you. At first, I want you to identify something that's hard in your life, in your business. And I want you to start to climb over it. Change your attitude about it. It's not hard. Just be like, oh, this is interesting. This is going to be fun. Think of who I'm going to become when I get to the other side. You know, this is just my wall. That's how I want you to look at it. Like, oh, this, this is just a wall that I have to climb over. No big deal. I've climbed over many other walls. Some walls that are much bigger than this one. And I can get to the other side. And I want you to get to that other side because there is a gift. There is a gift of satisfaction knowing that you can do it. And if you are looking for support around growing your business and how to leverage speaking opportunities, if you just want to communicate with confidence the next time you get in front of the camera, if you just want to feel confident, I want you to reach out to me. Reach out to me. I will share with you the different ways that I work with people. I typically work with high-achieving women who are tired of building their business the old way, which is putting out content, hoping that somebody reads it. Instead, let's get you in front of audiences filled with your ideal clients. You will speak with confidence. You will have a compelling, captivating, and most importantly, converting presentation. And you'll also have your audience raving about you, remembering you, and referring you to others. All you have to do is just book a call with me, and you can do that at chatwitha.com. And I look forward to meeting you and learning a little bit more about your business. And at the time of this recording, I have like two openings going into the next month, I think. So, Book that call at chatwithla.com and I look forward to meeting with you. And until next week, be in demand. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And join me over in my private Facebook group for more tips, community, and free trainings. You'll find the link in the show notes. You can also help this podcast reach more listeners by leaving a review. And as a thank you, each month I pick one of my reviewers to win a free coaching call with me. So if you haven't done so already, please leave a review and you could be the next winner.